Hello everyone. Oh, wait. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our next uh, live stream. Uh, today we are all the way, 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 way far away, at least from where I live in uh, Tokyo, Japan. Actually, we're just northeast of actually northwest of Tokyo, Japan. And today we're going to be flying ourselves on nice little general aviation planes. The whole purpose of this flight is basically to get acquainted for this incredibly dense city. I'm not going to be uh, doing too much tour guide here, but I'll kind of show some of the neat little sites that I picked up when I was doing some research on this. The airplane we're going to be using today is uh, none other than our handy-dandy little uh, Cessna 172, which I've been flying quite a bit of uh, recently, and I actually have a couple pictures, which I'll show you guys a little bit later on, where you can uh, see what weather looks like in the real world compared to what you predicted. I noticed uh, head to the shed, uh, you've got that airplane too. Excellent, this thing is so cool. Also, Simon, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get going. Uh, wind's coming out of the west today, so I'm going to have to kind of sneak around everybody in order to kind of navigate this carefully. Hopping around on grass here. Hopefully everybody has been uh, having an enjoyable week. Uh, we've got some stuff coming up next week uh, as far as the uh, GPS, the uh, GNS uh, 750, which is a pretty cool tool. I think you folks will enjoy that a lot. But again, today we're going to be nice and relaxed and kind of take it easy. Kind of making our way. Let's see who we have coming with us today. Smiley Bo, welcome back. Winter Bridge, welcome back. Uh, Simon, welcome back. Uh, let's see who else we have today. I recognize Laffa Rog, welcome back again. Uh, Reaper MD, welcome back. Head to the Shed, welcome back. I see a couple new folks uh, that could just be kind of flying around today. Welcome, Fednal. Uh, swing it down this side. I'll uh, we'll see who we have. A uh, Theater Techie, I do not remember you. A PB Vicious, uh, welcome back as well. It's uh, great to see everybody here today again. Like I said, great weather. This will be a pretty relaxing flight. We're actually going to be going to Disneyland. Uh, when I was first figuring out where I wanted to fly, my original thought was actually doing Los Angeles, California, as opposed to Tokyo. can always do that another day. But uh, for this particular one, I wanted to do something a little more international than we usually do. So I figured, hey, why not? All right, we have a very, very short runway today, so we're going to go ahead and pop down a one little notch of flaps here, which is going to be more than enough, and we'll go ahead and give ourselves the classic uh, short takeoff procedure here. Looks like I'm on number two to take off, though, after PB Vicious and Theater Techie, but maybe let me go by. <laughs> when we were flying the other day, we actually had a situation where the air traffic controller basically made us sit at the end of the runway for about 10 minutes while we were waiting for these two people to basically finish up their patterns. It's like, oh, come on, we can do it, we can do it. Uh, the closest airport, if you're looking for, uh, you can do Romeo Juliet, Juliet Tango Juliet, or you can just join us at Romeo Juliet Oscar Juliet. You can tell I don't do the Juliets very often. All right, we'll go swing down here. PB Vicious, uh, clear to take off. I think that's, uh, what do we got here? Runway 32. All right, I'll just probably take off through you, which is perfectly fine as well, but that's all right. Like I said, total flight time today, I think it's going to work out to be about 42 minutes. It depends on how close to the highway we actually want to fly as opposed to, you know, just kind of cruise around. But we'll see. <laughs> That's a great. Oh, man, I love that picture. I was like head to the shed. who's like, eh, got to go. <laughs> Excellent stuff, folks. Now, this would have been a nice plane to take, but you're going to be just a touch slow. All right. Nice and easy on the brakes. Easy on the brakes. The brakes on the real plane squeak like crazy. It's ridiculous. Ah, no problem, Pitbull. All right. Excuse me, sir. Um, you just kind of turn invisible for a second here. You are allowed to take off on the giant arrow. You're not allowed to land on the giant arrow, which I always thought was kind of funny. Apparently, that means there's a tree or something. Okie dokie. Get us all lined up. We're going to do this as a short field takeoff, so I'm going to hold my brakes. Apply full power. As soon as the plane ducks, we're going to release. And down we go. Excuse me. Get this thing running. It's not nearly as loud or shaky as it is in the real plane, but that's all right. Gotta get up to about 55 knots. We got ourselves a pretty nice little crosswind. It's 44, 55. We're gonna lift the nose up and we're gonna hold it right around 60 knots until we're clear of the trees. I'm not so early, I don't think. I think I said 11 o'clock, right? Yeah, I'm two minutes early. That's nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know. The big thing is it always takes me five minutes to actually get in the air, depending on the airport, but um, I'll do one circle for everybody just to make it a little bit easier. And if you look right over the nose, I'm sure everybody will recognize that giant mountain over there in the distance. Uh, you always see it, of course, in the pictures, but you never actually get to see it. That is not the mountain we're actually looking for. The one you're looking for, the one you're always thinking of when you think of Japan, is right there. Of course, in the real world, the visibility is never this good, so you actually can't see it. But that's all right. That's all right. All right, let's proceed. I'm going to go ahead and take a nice little left chat. Welcome back, Wiki Smash. And we're going to start making our way into the Tokyo metro area. Now, when I say populated, I mean populated. Now, for those of you who are doing a frame rate or comparisons or performance observations or anything like that, uh, this computer, it's an i9, it's a 10850K. It's a 3080 as far as the um, video card goes, 32 gigs of RAM. Everything's on a solid state. So if you wonder what it looks like when you fly over Japan at these graphics, you'll see it for yourself. We're going to come up to about 1,000 feet today, and we're going to slowly kind of make our way towards the city. 
And again, this is an amazingly populous people. You're talking tens of millions of people live here. It's just unbelievable populous. Like I said, if we did LA, it'd be pretty cool, but you're not limited by the mountains here. You can just basically go. All right, go ahead and check everything out. See how this thing's handling? Feels pretty good. All right, let's take a look behind us. Everybody's joining in. Laugh you've got the right idea. Uh, flying the little uh, pits there. That's an excellent little plane. Uh, we actually uh, got to watch one of the uh, Stearman biplanes coming for a landing the other day, and it was not smooth. <laughs> it was just too bumpy, and it was a little on the sketch side. All right, it's about 1,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and level the plane off. And we're just going to go ahead and make our way into the city proper. I'll go ahead and back the power up a little bit. We'll do about 2,500 RPM, which should get us about, it's like 69% power. <laughs> 69. But that's exactly what that's going to be. Right there. All right, looks pretty good. All right. We'll go ahead and let the automatic pilot trim things out for us just a tiny bit. That looks pretty good. Of course, the wind is nothing like it is in the real world. Yeah, right about there. Nice. cool. All right, so our first stop, basically we're going to make our way right along the little river down here. Uh, Tokyo, by the way, used to be Edo, E-D-O, and we're actually going to visit the castle that uh, has his likeness. The interesting thing here is you can just watch as the number of buildings just slowly starts to increase, and the height of the buildings start to slowly increase as we get progressively closer to uh, Tokyo proper here. Uh, one of the interesting things is when I was planning for this flight, all the text that I could find and all the charts were all in Japanese. So my ability to pronounce things is now hopeless because I'm unlike my buddy. I actually can't speak Japanese or do kanji or anything like that. And you can just start to see some of the city proper appearing right over there in the distance. You know, you get the same thing. Uh, pop in is a very real thing in the real world, depending on how expensive your airplane is. All right, let's check on everybody behind us. Uh, looks like we've got a really, really nice collection there. Like I said, we've said hello to just about everyone. Chris, for the... No, Chris 4-3. Oh, Chris 4-3. Okay, I see. 4 three, eight. I see what you did there. Nice. Loaded alarm. Welcome back, by the way. Smoking tire. Welcome back. All right. Let's uh, start cruising here. Now, in the real world, uh, this would be a pretty intense airspace. You know, I could just imagine how absolutely crazy it would be in as, far, as far as all the takeoffs and landings for all of Japan would be. And now, uh, just looking down, you can just see that it's like, oh, you know, this is just the suburbs. No, the suburbs are over here. We're in the city already. It's amazing if you think about it. How's it going, Ben? All right, just going to enjoy our little gentle flight here. We're basically going to come right up the river and then uh, take the main highway right into town and uh, see the sight, so to speak. Uh, Microsoft did release an update for this just a little while ago that kind of improved some of the uh, scenery. Hopefully, we get the ability to actually see some of that scenery. And now, uh, like I said, oh, hmm. I wonder what this is. I'm pretty sure they used this in a James Bond movie. I think it was uh, You Only Live Twice. I do not remember. It just reminds me of that. And of course, uh, those of you who are folks of The Simpsons will uh, probably remember that episode as well. And, you know, it's a nice Godzilla-free day today. And uh, you probably recognize that, the Tokyo Tower over there. We'll come visit that in a little later on. And uh, one of the things I did do is using a little nav map is I was actually able to uh, program the name of everything actually into the waypoints so that I'd be able to actually know what the things are. So I'm not going to be making everything up this time. Kind of nice. I'm pretty sure there should be a lot of buildings around here. But hey, we're working with what we got. So uh, my flight instructor uh, said that he watches uh, my YouTube video, which uh, makes me a little bit nervous there. So a uh, shout out to this guy named Dave. And uh, may your flights always be prime and golden. <laughs> he would tell me I always fly too fast in the traffic pattern, but that's besides the point. I just I want to get out of everybody's way. You know, it's a big deal. And there's our nice river coming right on through. you got to imagine having about a th thousand different boats on here just kind of sailing right through, going underneath all the bridges and everything like that. But look at the density of the buildings. This is incredible. <laughs> Thanks, Trondon. I Like I said, I'm not an expert here. Oh, man, look at that. And, of course, you've got the light rail, and I'm sure you've seen the pictures of the people being pushed into the subway cars in order to basically wedge as many people as possible. I mean, what other way? Imagine what the pandemic did as far as making everybody have to work from home, like the bandwidth requirements for population this dense. Yeah, it's just it's incredible if you just think about that, like just from a logistical perspective. All right, we'll be down into the city in just a few moments. I've got a little less than five minutes ETE, and then I'll take a look at some of the pieces. I'm starting to notice a little bit of the scenery coming in. Like I said, we'll take a look at everything kind of individually, and we'll go to Disneyland just to kind of take a look around. Um, hopefully everybody's got fast passes, because my understanding is the Tokyo Disneyland is one of the most longest lines ever for any Disneyland. I mean, just look around. It's got to serve all of this. I've never actually been to a Disneyland. Actually, no, I did Disneyland Paris a few years back, but I've never been to anything other than Disney World. 
this is oh man could you just imagine this like, at least there's an easy waypoint for those of you who are trying to fly everything visually today just kind of cruise right along here hmm this is not nearly as worn around as it should be so a fun fact uh, this window will randomly open on you if you go into dive strong enough and it causes the thing to go blank and pop open because of the pressure difference so make sure this is nice and tight in the real plane otherwise it gives you a really good surprise and throws your papers everywhere <laughs> thank you and like i said it's a godzilla for a free day of course it's a 30 second delay so we'll get that in a minute so anyway, uh, while we're cruising in, before we get into a maximum sightseeing mode, I just thought I'd share a couple quick things with you real, real fast. That's cool with everybody, now captive audience and all. Uh, the first one is uh, when I went flying yesterday. Uh, turns out, um, yeah, real weather. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Where we were landing was actually behind this. We had to actually go around all these thunderstorms in order to safely actually get the thing down. And it was absolutely nutty. But like, see how dark the ground is compared to how bright the ground is here? That's something they're going to they're gonna have to play with that over time, I think, with just a little bit. Uh, the other one that we have as well is, of course, after the rain falls, I, just, I caught a picture of this just out of the side of the plane, and I thought this was just the absolute coolest thing. But again, you can see the only time visibility is this good is after it has already rained and the scare eyes all been all kind of churned up and everything like that. I just thought I'd share that with everybody because that was kind of a fun flight. Of course, the other thing that happened to us this week is um, the ELT went off when we started doing search and rescue flying, trying to find an airplane just to realize it was us that was the plane that had been launched into distress. Oh, Moby Mobius, welcome back as well. All right, let's start getting into uh, observation mode here. So the first thing we're going to come up on is something called the Temple of the Goddess. Uh, this is going to be pretty distinctive. Basically, you're going to have all gray, and also, boop, you're going to have this neat little kind of grassy area where you can kind of see it. And I love the fact that they keep their waterfront uh, really, really nice and green. You can see where they built it up a little bit in case it floods. But again, you can imagine all these little parks and stuff all kind of along here. But uh, after that, uh, directly to the south is, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to do this one. It's a Camimon Cam Cam gate. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get that, but I tried. I tried. <laughs> All right, we're going to swing on. We'll be there in, uh, what do we got? I think I timed this pretty accurately here, about three minutes to go or so. Obviously, this tower is very, very, very distinctive. It's going to be taller than pretty much everything here. And we're going to see, like I said, we'll go down to Canada and do a touch-and-go landing as well. And then we'll go through the center of the city, which, of course, at this altitude, eh, it's a little sketchy. I'm trying to identify exactly where the river splits here. That should be taking us exactly where. I think it's going to be right kind of in here like this. See how everybody's doing behind us right now? Laferog, oh, you've got the right idea there. Uh, Toro's about to rear end me. That's okay. By the way, in the real world, traffic sucks. <laughs> You're always getting it from both directions at the same time. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. We should be crossing a little... Yeah, this is the canal right in here. And then basically it's going to come right around... Yeah, we're pointing right at it. Just curious when we're actually going to be able to see it. This looks interesting. <laughs> That's your photogrammetry fighting you there. It's interesting. Just trying to see. Like, I don't... Look at how dense this is. Could you imagine this in Flight Simulator 98? It would just be amazing. Or, oh, Toro. I almost lost you there. Amazing. All right, we're going to switch to uh, Extreme Microsoft Flight Simulator streamer mode here and uh, kind of use our third person just so we can see everything. Because, I mean, they took so much time to make this look like this. We might as well take advantage of it. Now, a fun, useless piece of trivia for uh, uh, people who are interested in Tokyo is most of these buildings are less than 75 years old. You know, Tokyo had a really rough earthquake back in the 20s, and it also had a little bit of uh, World War as well. And that caused the city just to, oh man, just rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. All right, we should be looking right in here, I believe. Be right, and like I said, I, no, I calculated that pretty accurate, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> this is amazing. It makes me think of like uh, your digital combat simulator. If you could, uh, you know, go anywhere in the world and have this as far as what you're looking out the window and your little scope for. Uh, Scrap, if you're interested in joining, um, you just got to set your server up to uh, all players and then go East USA. Uh, you can come join us. Or just, oh, I'm heading over to Tokyo proper right now. I think the nearest airport, uh, yeah, Canada International is probably going to be the easiest one to use. I just want to think of Canada. I also think of Akira. All right, so the Temple of the Goddess should be right down below. We're basically looking right at it, and then uh, we're going to take a right turn right to the Kimberlian Grade as well. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. You're absolutely correct. Like I said, the amazing, amazing, extremely modern city because it's not that old. I mean, you go to Paris, France, and it's just uh, it's a little different. Ah, 
gotcha. So that's going to be our Temple of the Goddess. Well, I wish we're taking that rotation on right there. It's a definitely a traditional building. Check this out right there. It's so cool. And then we're going to come right around, and the Kinmaran Gate is literally, that's not how I pronounce that. I know I tried. It's going to be basically right below us, but unfortunately, it looks like they did not model it. It's that big, um, if you want to think of it another way, it's this arch like this. That's the one that you're referring to. But what we will do is we'll pop over to the dome real quick, which is right around the corner. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Again, I'm not making any judgments on the Japanese. Um, amazing culture, incredibly hardworking people. Now, unfortunately, I think the Tokyo Dome is not modeled correctly. <laughs> I'm looking at this going, I'm pretty sure that's where the Tokyo Dome is supposed to be. Oh, by the way, if anybody wants to see something really cool, go like this. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Love that. All right. All right, we should be passing right over the Tokyo Dome in just a second. Like I said, apparently their version of the Tokyo Dome looks more like an office building, but ah, we're making do with what we got here. We're making do with what we got here. Like how Moby's like a little bit lower than us. Yes. All right, we're going to swing over this way, and we're going to head right over to the gardens here. We're going to go to the Edo Castle, which is amazing. I actually have a Lego version of this that was a pretty cool build for anybody who actually wants to look it up. It's the castle when you think of, oh, a Japanese castle. You're literally thinking of this particular castle here. And it's lit, should be right around the corner. But unfortunately, it does not look like they modeled it well, which is, ah, that's such a bummer. It's such a cool structure. EDO Castle, for those of you who are looking for something to go kind of poke around online. And I'm getting all the uh, front turbulence here, which isn't too, too bad. Ah, what a bummer. I figured they would have uh, modeled that one, because that one's as uh, Tokyo as I can possibly think. All right, we're now going to go ahead and swing over to the east now. We're going to take ourselves over to the Meiji Jingu, which is uh, basically uh, going to be um, big old museum, older buildings as well. Ah! Guess what we just found, though? I don't know. That's what it said on the uh, thing. Because I know there's another one. I was just commenting that it was not the Tokyo Dome. I'm just going off what it said on the chart. But like I said, I could be completely wrong on that. So I'm fine with that, too. All right, we're going to swing through this way now. And we're going to make our way kind of over to the side of things. Again, a little bit more of uh, one of these uh, classic parks of some of this older architecture as well. Ah, guess what I just found? There's one of them. Yep, they're all both right here. Excellent. And the best I could get is a Miji Jingu on this one. I'm Red 6-4 if you're looking for me. And you can see both of those traditional structures. One right there, and you got the other one right here. And then when you swing from here, going directly to the left, I think you all recognize what that is as well. That was the uh, picture that we had actually used for our little initial live stream here. Now, of course, we're going to have to take an incredible one. I am using the photogrammetry. It might just be something that's unavailable this time. Ah, oh, this is so cool. So, 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 so cool here. There's nothing like this in the States. Swinging around, absolutely gorgeous piece of architecture here. That is so cool. Love this little twisty thing. Unfortunately, it looks like they didn't model it in 3D, which is too bad. Can I play with you? I can't speak to that, Ben2003. He's asking about Xbox. I don't know much about the Xbox version of this particular program. The only thing that I know is basically, I know they have to simplify some things, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. It might be that you just can't control what server you're on, in which case you may not be able to join us because of that. All right, we're now going to go ahead and appoint. I think you know where we're going next. <laughs> and then we're going to come down to Haneda. Then we're going to go to Disneyland and go for, uh, of course, at Chiba. I'm noticing the buildings are getting progressively taller here. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm sure we should be in a really, really expensive helicopter right now. We shouldn't be in a little Cessna like this. This just feels uh, almost rude. Great tower. And we're just going to kind of slink through the center of the city here really, really, really carefully. And we're going to make our way down to the shore. We'll go visit the airport and land at Haneda. And then, like I said, we'll go over to Chiba. This is so cool. Like, it just... You see pictures of it, but you never get a feel for that. 
Oh, excellent. So we just got an update for people watching and not reading. Uh, they will have Xbox and PC having the same multiplayer servers. So that is super duper exciting news. There's your Tokyo Tower. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so cool. So cool. The giant Xbox. All right, down to Haneda we go. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't realize you had to manually install that. I thought that was something that did automatic. I'm going to have to go back and actually set that up. That is a bummer. I should have set that one up before. <laughs> Yes, so we will do Disney World at some point as well. But we will do Disneyland today. All right, now this is a cool little piece of interesting. You actually have uh, one of the cargo ships, uh, one of the uh, uh, AI traffic model ones. They're just sort of chilling there. I think that's a neat detail. All right, we're going to do a quick touch and go over here in Haneda, and then we're going to kind of make our way over to the east. And we're going to, like I said, we'll go visit Disney World and everything. Or should I say Disneyland, because uh, we don't have a Disney World here. And like I said, we'll kind of sneak up the other way. Tokyo Tower is slightly taller than the Eiffel Tower. That is a great piece of shoes. <laughs> yeah, it's at 4.6. It, it is a little rough here. And I should have turned the photogrammetry on, but I'm almost glad I didn't because I may have melted my computer and that would have been unpleasant for a stream. Oh, man, check this out. Looks like uh, he loaded himself up a little bit too much and I went for a swim there, but that's all right. All right, swinging down this way. Oh, this is so cool. Man, this is so cool. Because you basically everything... Oh, here comes a leg. Look at the massive, massive rail yard that you have right behind this gigantic shipping yard and everything whoop, goes right down this way into town. Ah, it's so cool. All right, let's put this thing on the ground. So the winds are out of the west. So I'll uh, take a look at the runway here. We'd actually have to go ahead and do kind of a little traffic-y pattern thing here, but that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I don't know what the deal with that is. I'm going to go zoom in just a little bit here. Let's go ahead and pick out the correct runway here, just in case my flight instructor is uh, watching... Of course, you'd be like, why are you doing a... Just do a right base. It's like, nah, it's no, no. All right, let's go ahead and do a nice little right base. Swing this way. Oh, man. Yeah, if you tip the plane that much in traffic pattern, they get real grumpy at you for some reason. I don't know what the deal with that is. All right, we're just going to come on down. We're going to put ourselves right on that runway on the right. And we're going to come around, zip over the water, and like I said, we'll go visit Disneyland. Go ahead and cut the throttle. We could basically uh, do a power off all the way to land at this point. I'm looking out the right, looking out the right. I love this little pier that they did here to extend the lights. That's so cool. All right. Okay, let's put ourselves right down on the ground. Bye. Again, for me, the wind's coming out of the west here. I'm going to pull the nose up. Dump the flaps. Gotcha. I believe the word is chop and drop. Yeah, one of the great things about these little tiny planes is they're just so light you can basically land without an engine. It's awesome. Not quite motor glider territory, but we're going to slip a little bit here. We have a lot of speed here, so we're going to have to kind of float just a little bit. The real plane slows down a lot quicker than this. All right, cancel out our slip. Yeah, we're still floating. <laughs> Good thing this runway is pretty long. Yeah, the real plane would have come down a long time ago. There we go. Full speed, get rid of the flaps, and let's go to Disneyland. <laughs> He's flying to Japan tonight in real life. That is a long, well, I don't know where you live. That can be an amazingly long flight. I actually flew down to Australia, and that, oh my gosh, you want to talk about an experience. That is a very, very, very long flight. I remember those were the kind of early days of the TSA, too. So, of course, any times you, you know, got up to talk to somebody because, you know, you were bored because it was a long flight, uh, they would immediately give you, like, a thousand stink eyes and everything like that, and you'd be stuck in a situation where you're, um, well, for the TSA, you're not allowed to congregate. You could be planning terrorism, and it's like, Dude, I can't sit in a chair for 18 hours. That's 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 kind of hard. That's kind of hard. All right, to Disneyland. Stuff a little bit of trim here. Let's see everybody else is doing. Hopefully they don't embarrass themselves nearly as bad as I did. We watched a guy yesterday uh, come in basically 800 feet above the end of the runway, and um, we were waiting for the go around, and he started descending. Then he decided to go around. It was pretty mess. Paris to Osaka, 12 hours. Oh yeah. At least you're going in that direction. The ride home, by the way, will be a lot longer. All right, Moby Moby's uh, sneaking right up on my right there. Oh, Laffle Rock, pull up. Don't sink. Don't sink. Oh, my God. Blackout. Blackout. 
Oh, welcome back, Loaded Alarm. I missed you earlier. All right, to Disneyland. A little bit of right foot. And we're just going to make our way over there nice and easily. It's about a 1,000 feet. Yeah, don't do that, by the way, because you hit your head on the top of the airplane. <laughs> little things that you miss out. Yeah, we're going to go off course a little bit here, but that's all right. I love the way that they do these uh, locks and everything, and you know, these artificial islands. It's amazing. All right. I think I'm basically pointing right at it. Stay. Stay. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's a scary plane to look out your back window and see basically sneak it up on you. All right, let me look out the window here. I believe we need to be right over on the right. I'll go ahead and bop the nav button. So now, of course, uh, thanks to Luca, in case anybody missed that, basically he was pointing out the fact that if you want to do uh, all the world updates, you have to download manually. You don't just get them because you get them, which is, eh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Because now I have to run around and download all of those, and my poor hard drive is already mad at me. Nope. I'll just take manual control here. This is where I really wish we had the real G1000, so you could just say go direct. Because the moment I go to go direct, it's going to override the rest of my flight plan, which is going to make me really miserable. All right, I'm just going to come in basically straight here. There we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I even left myself a note. Gotcha. Now, the photogrammetry is absolutely gorgeous when it works, but man, will it slow any computer down. All right. I can't wait till they bring in the combat plate simulator version of this. My poor house will never receive so much ordnance. I'm a red 6-4. We have to come a lot more right than that. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and keep going. And there's Disneyland. Knew we'd find it. Check it out. So uh, Disneyland... Uh, whoa! <laughs> Carefully nasty, fasty. So uh, Disneyland here, um, for those of you who have not seen it, is absolutely the most technologically advanced of all the Disneylands. They have all the greatest tech. You know, they have borderline, like, holograms in here and super amazing robotics. I mean, it's befitting Japan kind of a thing. But it's kind of a bummer that uh, we in the States don't have anything nearly sophisticated. One of the cool things here is you have, like, the whole, like, uh, Nemo's uh, Adventure Island thing. For those of you who have seen uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, they've got, like, the little cove and everything there. And they have this all kind of, like, watered out and everything. And if you turn your head, there's, um, you know, ocean. Just amazing when you look at it that way. And then right next to it, you know, you've got all the hotels, you've got the adventure land. It's just, it's so super cool. And then you've got another thing just like it directly to the north there. I just think, uh, it's, so, it's just so cool that you can cram this much stuff into one area. All right. So now we're going to go to uh, Funabashi Seaside, which is a neat little park right on the edge. And we're going to swing over to Chiba. Then we're going to start thinking about coming down for a nice little gentle landing. Hopefully a little better than that last one. That was way too much energy. Real plane, by the way. It, it floats, but it doesn't float like that. <laughs> this is so cool. I love all the baseball. Japanese baseball is a little different than American baseball, but not, I'm not an expert. All I know is the strike zone is a little bit bigger and the strategy is a little different. <laughs> yeah, well, when we flew to Australia, it was we left on Monday morning and we got there on Wednesday, but we'd only been flying for about 20 hours. So it was one of those moments of, uh, oh my... That is the best way to describe it. And then on the way back, you leave at, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning, their time, fly for like 30, 40 hours, then get home on the same day at like 5.30 at night. And it's, oh, it's just weird. Nope, that's not working. I'm not sure what he's saying. I do read the chat the best I can, yes. Whoa, man, we got quite a pile coming now. Jeez. Of course, I'm bad because I always start exactly on time. Eh, it's just one of my things. Sorry. Nope.
we're gonna have to check that out. So now when I think Chiba, of course, I always think of uh, Neuromancer, for those of you who know William Gibson's work. Anybody who's uh, familiar with the concept of cyberpunk, um, a book came out in the 80s, like I said, the name of the book was uh, Neuromancer, and it basically kind of kicked off the whole concept of like, you know, the pan-American, Japanese, everything like that. Um, please don't spam or have to put on slow. There we go. All right. So now we're going to be swinging over to Chiba, which is going to be right off her right. And we are on our way. Okay, now we're going to head over to Jiva. Sorry about that, folks. And down we go. All right, so for our landing today, it's going to be a pretty straightforward experience. Uh, basically, we're going to be swinging all around kind of this way, stopping by Chiba, and then kind of coming back up the uh, right coast here, uh, making pretty good time, like I said. Uh, one of the things I did hint at on our original little piece here was, uh, you know, kind of taking a little bit of low-altitude work, but I'm going to wait until we get just about to the motorway, and then we're going to kind of make our way down that way. Now, one thing I would love to be able to do on this one, but I know it's not going to quite work the way that I want it to. Should be able to come right down here. And I should be able to activate that leg directly. It's like one of those things where you'd have a button for it in the normal world. Or you'd be able to press the uh, direct to button. But obviously, as soon as you do that, I'm going to lose everything. So uh, unfortunately, that feature is not that. Yes, I know there is a great working title version of the uh, G1000. One of these days, I actually got to do it. Uh, speaking of which, uh, let me ask everybody if they're interested. Um, I've been playing with VATSIM a little bit recently. Would anybody be interested in attempting a live stream on VATSIM to make them absolutely insane? All right, that was fun. <laughs> Oop, got passed. Not sure who passed, but that's all right. Swinging around this way, we have uh, Moby Mobius, uh, Peak Pizza. I don't remember that one. Christopher 3. Ariel Cruz, welcome back. I missed you earlier. I love the folks in the uh, Pits 2S there. That's absolutely excellent. Uh, we're going to make our way down to uh, some low-altitude action in just a minute. Like I said, I just want to kind of take my little turn out of uh, Chiba here and uh, slowly make my way up the highway. It's kind of uh, my current waypoint, if you want to think about it another way. Bonus. Interesting. Tuesday's update, Ted 4 6. Yeah, Jeff, I am going to have some stuff on VATSIM actually coming up pretty soon. Um, now that I feel a little more comfortable with it, I don't, I'm not as nerve wracked as uh, trying to put a video together with it. Uh, they're a great community. It definitely requires some patience. Uh, it's Head 4 6, Tuesday's update. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> No, so a Toro Drone, if we did VATSIM as a group, what we'd have to basically do is we'd have to tell them in advance that we're intent to do this, so that way they could build, have two controllers in place or something just to kind of accommodate this many people. Now, the other catch, too, is um, obviously you can join us without joining us kind of a thing. So you could fly without actually having their controllers, but you just wouldn't be on their servers kind of a thing. Uh, that's another possibility. So it's, you know, it, it could be interesting. It's just kind of an interesting moment. The only downside, of course, is you're stuck on flight plans the entire time. So, uh, you know, whatever you've decided to do as far as your flight plan goes, you pretty much want to stick to it. Otherwise, the uh, community is not going to like you very much. Uh, Ted46, uh, you're mentioning an update that's going to be on Tuesday. Uh, what's going on about it that's going to make it? <laughs> so, Jeff, uh, the, the, the most important thing, I'll just say this, and this comes back to the real world, and I'm sure my uh, flight instructor get a kick out of this, is um, I was terrified of using the radio itself. Like, that was the one thing I could not do. Like, it was just, it was hopeless. But the big thing is you have to remember they're normal people. Like, they're not like, you know, the angry school teacher that you see, like, in a Pink Floyd music video or something like that. They're like, you know, you and I kind of a thing. So they're going to goof up things like what airplane you are. They're going to goof up things like, you know, where you are. They're going to goof up things like forgetting that you need to land. I mean, uh, just the other day, uh, somebody actually, this is great. You know, we're coming into landing in uh, Hartford in a city. You know, well, 9725, get back. I'll write down one for two, request landing. And uh, so, of course, the guy goes, uh, cleared for, um... um Mm, um, mm, um, run 
Conway too. And it was one of those, and I'm looking at there going, uh, what was that? So first of all, you know, clear for two for 9725 Quebec. But um, what had happened is the windsock was doing donuts. So if you want to imagine what my head's doing right now, this is literally what the windsock was doing at the airport that we were trying to come into a landing to. So the reason the air traffic controller was um, not being terribly helpful to our initial approach is because you can imagine him trying to predict what the wind is going to be. Is everybody nice and dizzy now? <laughs> but that was a case where he got the one wrong. He also got the type of airplane wrong once, which was, um, I mean, I felt a little bit better because, um, you know, when you open up the radio for the first time and you're like, blah, 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 and then you got like, one number wrong and they just repeat it back to you. And it's like, oh, I've done goofed. <laughs> Like I said, don't stress, though. It's not nearly as bad as you think. The neat thing with VATSIM, too, and nobody tells you this, is unless there's a controller, you're not under their rules, so to speak. Does anybody know if the Fly-By-Wire 320 will work on Xbox because it's in the marketplace? Anything in the marketplace should theoretically work for it. It might be a performance issue on the Xbox, but I can't speak to that directly. There might also be something that the PC needs or whatever. All right, time to land this thing. So we're coming in to uh, Zaro Aero. This is a Romeo Juliet Tango Kilo for anybody who's doing it. You know, I'm just going to go direct to Why not? So hopefully that helps for anybody who's nervous about bats. And it really, it, it's not scary. You'll get over it. Obviously, if you want to fly a big airliner that you're completely unfamiliar with into a zone you've never flown into before, you're asking for it. But again, the most it can do is what are they going to do? Kick you from the server kind of a thing? It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> yes um leave your uh, windsock hacks at the door please um that's actually a pretty funny way to think of it i'm gonna have to bring that one up because that that's literally what it was and like i showed you from the picture earlier in the flight today like the weather is just it the weather is like ridiculous in the real world compared to what it is in the simulator Uh, separating processes. Does anybody know um, all the sim updates are always helped? They've never caused issues. <laughs> You're not wrong there, Sean. You're not wrong at all. All right, let's move. All right, landing this one's uh, going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, this one, because of the runway, and again, our wind is coming out of the west, it's almost the definition of a uh, rumbly-tumbly one. Are we able to get the flight plan? Um, I don't know how I could share the flight plan with you. I just got it on a little nav map. I'll show you um, uh, my incredible little uh, hack here. Um, what I can actually do here is, I mean, I can share this file with you if it's something that you're looking for. But again, I'm not sure if this is something that can actually help you with um, what you're doing in the actual navigation there. All right. Keep on screwing. Okay, anyway, what I was saying. So on um, the uh, airport uh, that we're approaching right now, because it's basically going to be a pure crosswind, anybody who wants to experience what that's like, by the way, like we had the other day. So if I click uh, right here, if you just want to go down to your wind layer, this is what you do. You set the wind in one direction for one speed, and then you set the gusts in the opposite direction for another speed. So you run into a situation where your wind is from this direction, but your gust is from this direction. So the other thing I would do too is I go ahead and crank up the gust per minute a little bit. Eh, let's make it interesting. About 18, we'll set the gusts here to 12. Okay, so um, if anybody uh, goes ahead and wants to try this sucker out uh, when you're gonna land on the ground, uh, feel free to knock yourself out with it. This is basically what had happened to us the other day, but it wasn't quite that strong of a wind. But again, it should be more than enough interesting landing for you. <laughs> like I said, for anybody looking for that extra little bit of, okay, now I understand why the guy wouldn't clear you to land right away kind of a thing. All right, 2,540 RPM. Looks good. Uh, not with the spam. Not with the spam. Okay, let's go ahead and spot this sucker here. Basically, what I'm going to do is a left traffic pattern, and I'll come swing around, and I'll put the thing down to the ground. And I'm just looking, it's a runway two and a runway two zero. So I'm just going to leave myself a quick little note. One of the easiest ways to do that is just take your little heading bug and you just shove it right up to the runway that you're going to be putting yourself on there. And I'm going to put it right, right here. Perfect. So now I know exactly what runway I am. So when I get there, basically, I'm just going to be coming around, heading this way, heading this way, heading this way to kind of swing around. But again, for those of you who are trying out that particular uh, wind, enjoy that. It's going to be a little bumpy. And you do get to watch the windsock do uh, basically air donuts. It's pretty fun. <laughs> uh, this side of things, of course, is uh, basically the industrial zone. Uh, there's actually a really neat oil terminal. And I think, yeah, it's right here. Basically, your oil tanker can plug into this thing and just sort of send it right into shore here. And of course, you've got all the rail lines and things. But look at all this dense it is on this side. It's awesome. All right, looking around. Looks like we got 330 to go. Our altitude is literally perfect i guess we can come down 100 feet so i'll do that real fast i'm down 100 feet we'll go ahead and do a flight level change there pull the throttle back a teeny tiny bit 
in the real plane, you could literally knock off 200 RPM, and that would be enough to get you going down to the point where you need to be. And then you just push the throttle back in. Don't even touch anything. It's really, 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 really nice. All right, start doing it before landing checks. The traffic isn't nearly this bad. I like this guy right here. He's literally doing highway speed. Oh, no. Well, he's on the highway. Also, notice they got the side of the road correctly. I appreciate that. Okay. This is going to be a tiny runway. I think you guys are going to love it. It's right there if you're looking closely. Uh, let's see how everybody else is. They're all queuing up behind me. Maybe if I slow it down too much, I'll give it some more power. Oh, man. Look at this. This is going to be the most people who've ever landed on this runway before. I love the formation flying, guys. This is excellent. Absolutely excellent. What happened to our uh, Piper that I saw a little earlier? Ah. Bingo. As usual, after we land, uh, we'll go ahead and position ourselves uh, kind of on the ramp. It's not that they have a ramp, but they have like a little, I guess on the left side from where we're sitting, kind of the east side of things, uh, there's this little kind of place you can kind of park in the grass, and we'll probably just pop down there. All right, 1,000 speed is good. All that other stuff is good. And like I said, now for one of those who wants to try out that fun wind, uh, feel free to uh, steal my wind design here. It's um, definitely going to be a little bit more fun than your probably usual approaches. For those of you who are masochists, feel free to bring this up to 10 and this up to 20. It'll make things much more exciting for you. <laughs> I wonder if it'll actually show the wind. We gotta play with that. We gotta play with that. Windy wind option. I expect this needle should be basically going like this, but uh, there it goes. There it goes. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. It mostly favors the west, I guess. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and swing over here to the right. Kind of, kind of shave off the end of the runway, and then I'm gonna come over, kind of down the straight there. Pretty good, pretty good. Check that out. That is so cool. I wonder if the... You always think of those beautiful pictures like where the sun's behind that or something like that. That's just... Ah, oh, it's amazing. Now, what we could have done is uh, gone down to Iwo Jima or something like that, but that would have just been a very short flight. Okinawa is a much, much bigger um, island than people think it is, though. That would have been kind of neat. All right, we're just going to kind of bring ourselves into a crosswind here. Then we're going to go zing down the downwind and take a left and a left. And uh, hopefully things go pretty good. And I'm going to come this way. Like I said, I want to round this off just a little bit more, just in case anybody uh, can't see us. It's a lot more obvious when you're flying sideways. There we go. And the interesting thing is you guys don't show up as traffic on my G1000. That, that's depressing. All right. Got this uh, pasty guy over here. Where am I from? Um, United States, New England. All right, let's do it to it. Glad nobody took the uh, Cessna 152. We need to still be back there in uh, Disneyland. Whoa, oh my. Hello. That's an aggressive way to fly. Oh, we're getting F-18s, by the way, but I think everybody uh, found out about that already. It looks good, looks good. Let's do it. <laughs> I was like the guy making fun of us. So in the real world, the pilots are so judgy. Like, we will sit there at the uh, taxiway ready to land kind of a thing. Just watching people come and be like, nope, 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 nope. You know, it's one of those things. Like, it's oh, it's so wrong. It's just absolutely terrible. You know, you're always judging the craft of uh, your fellow aviators kind of a thing like that. Of course, in the real world, the wind is so terrible all the time. It's like, you're lucky you get... Any wheel on the ground at the same time. It's crazy. All right, we're down and slow. Yeah. All right. I don't see any windsock or anything like that. But remember, we have winds changing direction constantly. So it'll be extra fun for anybody in a tail dragger today. Airspeed is actually good. Flight instructor can't get me for that one today. And it looks like we got a nice little tarmac. I'm going to be aiming right for that blue building for those of you who like to join us for the picture at the end. I like the little red dot. I wonder what that's about. It's probably don't land here. Big old two zero right there. And this is going to be one of those landings where you're basically going to go left, 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 left. There's not really going to be a nice gentle approach or anything. This is a fun little game when you're doing a right traffic pattern where you can't see through the person next to you. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there.
Oh, by the way, avionics in the real world don't refresh this quickly, and they're not even. They're never smooth. I'll bring the nose up a little bit so I can see. Yeah, it looks good. Now I'm just going to bring this right to a final. And our speed's a little tiny bit slow, but it's a bit of a short runway, so. Ah, yeah, that was actually decent. Was he decent? All right, I'm just going to back the throttle out. Line ourselves with the big number two zero. Remember, you're in gusts, so you want to come in a little fast. And I'm just going to kind of hold it at idle until we safely get into the ground. Then I'm going to go ahead and take it right. It's never this smooth. <laughs> it's just wrong. All right, there's a big old number two. We'll go for the second line. That's the first line. And that's the second line. Close enough. Whoa, Simon, easy, easy. <laughs> We're here. Of course, uh, whenever you're supposed to call your landing position, you're always supposed to call it before you actually uh, you know, get into that position. All right, to the tarmac. That's another one the flight instructor will drill you on, by the way. A taxi is considered a fast walk. Um, I consider it, um, you know, driving on the highway. <laughs> Good to judge everybody. Uh, theater Techie, I love the uh, proper traffic pattern there. That's excellent. I come sneak up. Hangar set one. Oh, easy on the nose, 47. PB Vicious. Is that like peanut butter? All right. Ah, break. Got to do the little shimmy where you just jam on one break as opposed to the other one. All right. That was excellent. All right, we'll wait until everybody gets over here, and we'll go ahead and take our victory picture. As usual, uh, when we get to the end of our little adventures here, I always like to ask, uh, does anybody have any questions or any videos? Um, I did catch a couple different videos that people were mentioning the fact they'd like to see some stuff with that sim. I will I'll definitely put together some stuff for there. It's scary, but it's not impossible. And obviously, I'd love to do a live stream where we actually do that sim. And basically, you know, trash, not trash, but crash is the word i'm going to use like jfk or something like that actually making something uh barry allen asks uh, am i using a joystick yes i actually have uh, rudder pedals i have a gunfighter mark three for my joystick and my throttle is a verbal um mt50 i think they call it like the mongoose three or something like that so um those are all I'm, i mean i'm i can't endorse anything i like it <laughs> i could say that all right let's go get our little picture here usapr i missed you earlier nice landing I love the big red circle instead of the big X that we get in the U.S. That's so cool. I also like these uh, wingtip to wingtip um, uh, landings. <laughs> it's just excellent. Simon and head to the shed. Love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, my God. Craziest thing that ever happened to me as a pilot. Great question, Roy. Um, we lost electricity at night. The, uh, what had happened is the alternator had failed, and the little light that tells you that it had failed didn't go off. And when we checked it, it was working fine. So our battery died. So when the battery died and your alternator didn't work, it was pitch black in the airplane and your radios died and we were flying at night. So we unfortunately had to land the airplane without being able to use any lights and without being able to use radios. But in the US, small airports have radio controlled lights. So you can't turn the lights on and you don't have lights and you're flying at night. So I think you can probably imagine how exciting that would be in an airplane which like this where everything's glass. That would be terrifying. All right, let's get our photo here. You guys are a wonderful audience. Wonderful, wonderful audience. Let me go ahead and get my picture real quick. Oh, uh, right there. Gamerson's 88. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there any other videos uh, folks are looking for as I kind of taxi back to my, uh, you know, dive into the Tokyo Bay here? Get an emergency picture just in case. All right. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. 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 Excuse me. Whoa. Excuse me. Sorry. All right. So that was probably the most crazy thing ever. We're fine. Uh, turns out uh, having a backup radio that still can use lights is a nice thing to have. I'll just say that. All right. Like I said, any other videos anybody's looking for in particular? Uh, in which case, I'd love to uh, go ahead and take care of those. I got some stuff on the uh, GTN 750 coming out next week, which I think you'll like. And we'll look at Vatsim for the following week. <laughs> you know, um, pilots have things happening at the time. Like the other day, we were doing search and rescue for an ELT that we were picked up everybody on the radio just to realize it was our ELT. We were search and rescuing ourselves. So that was pretty crazy, but nothing too, too much. Uh, somebody's asking something about 747s. I never really thought about the 747. Like, that didn't come to mind right away. Oh, everybody's got the right idea, I guess. Time to go swimming. <laughs> Try to aim for a little island here. We can do a Microsoft top takeoff. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm glad you enjoyed, Fred. 
All right, as usual, I always like to uh, do some awfulness to this airplane at the end of the flight. I just need to find a nice safe spot to do it. Uh, let's see here. Eh, we'll do this. Would you recommend getting started? Um, so, Hoosh, if you're interested in getting started with VATSIM, the best thing I would do, and this is going to sound crazy, is uh, people do great videos where you can actually see them. Like, um, not me. <laughs> Other people do really, really good videos where you can see the air traffic control. But they actually have a thing on their website where they'll actually explain how to do... <laughs> actually, wait a minute. That wasn't satisfying. Hang on. Uh, where they'll actually explain all the different protocols for it. Um, the flights, the um, air traffic control inside the program is actually not bad in that regard. They do a decent job kind of getting you ready for it. At the end of the day, who's, uh, what you're trying to do there is you basically say uh, who you're talking to, who you are, and what, where you are, and then what you're doing. So for me right now, you know, this is a Cessna a Red 6-4 is at uh, 400 feet climbing for 1,000. Uh, I'm looking for a full stop landing or something like that. That's basically, if you can get yourself past that, you'd um, be pretty successful at it. Speaking of full stop landings, um, let's go ahead and mangle this plane with a nice spin here. I'm going to hold my nose up. We're just going to hold the nose up, hold the nose up, and right as the stall breaks, we're going to go ahead and jam on the rudder. And there it goes. Spin! Oh, this is going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that's a spin. Woohoo! <laughs> As always, uh, have a wonderful night. Hopefully everybody enjoyed today. I had a lot of fun uh, flying around. I uh, taking a look at the uh, scenery there and uh, putting the plane down. If anybody has any cool ideas for uh, future flights, uh, let me know and I'll definitely uh, look at it. Uh, we're coming up really quickly to our anniversary. I know exactly what we're going to do for that. And I think um, most folks who are like technically inclined will really get a kick out of it. Other than that, enjoy. I'll hang out in the chat for a couple minutes and uh, stay safe. See ya.